This is John Black, Super Chemist. Um, we're here to make a bubbler or a scrubber. Uh, basically, when you're doing an experiment and you got gases coming off, you don't want to breathe them. You don't want to put them into the at you know, atmosphere, you know what I mean? Um, you get a little hose. You take the hose and you put it in some water. And it'll bubble through the water and that'll scrub it out. That's the simplest way. Um, here's another. If you look at the top up here. Um, I got a, these red is tubing, the black is just canisters or bottles or whatever. Uh, you can see there's water there, water there, and that's a funnel. Green is funnel, blue is water. I got the tube coming out of the apparatus. Now, see, I don't go got it on all the way to the bottom. I'm going to tell you why in a second. But the next one, I, I got it on all the way to the bottom to both of them. And after that. I don't have it going to the bottom. See here? Now these last two are going to have water in them. Well, what's going to happen here is this one's empty, right? Now pressure pushes the gas through here, comes out, fills this bottle up, pushes it through here, and it bubbles through water. Comes out of the water, and it can come out of here to that funnel. Now you set that funnel exactly right onto the water level, and that way when it sucks up, let's say that uh, it gets cold over here. Let's say you're making chlorine and uh, now all of a sudden the chlorine stopped making it so there's no gas coming through here um, so what's going to happen is you're going to have a vacuum and you're going to suck everything out of here when this gets sucked out this water will be drawn through this tube into this uh, canister instead of into the apparatus and you can see it's only enough to fill it up halfway and we only put our hose just barely into the canister so let's say there is a back a suck back. The water comes out, comes into here. This water will go up into the funnel, but as soon as there's gets up to part lay up to the funnel, this water level will go down below the funnel. And Air will be allowed to go into the funnel, into the apparatus, uh, that way equalizing the pressure, and that will stop the uh, the uh, vacuum from here. Um, now, I want you to think about this. Let's say that a suck back does happen. This is the second part. The water gets sucked up. Now you got water here. And you still got water there because it can't actually get sucked up. What you can do now with your bubbler is pull this funnel off. And you can see this setup right here. It's set up the same. The hoses are the same exact way. This, this, see there? Now all you do is take this hose and that you had on your apparatus, right? And you connect it to a funnel. Move your jar over here with your water, right? This side that was connected to the funnel, you connect to the apparatus, and you're all ready to go. Nothing got sucked back into your experiment, and it's an easy switch around. You just switch your funnel and your hoses and put your canister over here. You're ready to go again. Well, let's get to building it. First thing you'll need is a bottle, any kind of plastic bottle. As a cap, you can drill holes into it. Uh, basically, uh, my hose has an OD or outside diameter of half inch. Uh, so I want two half inch holes in there. First, I'm going to start out with a 3 16 drill bit just to get the hole started. Then I'm going to move on to a half uh, inch diameter drill bit. And uh, that way it'll fit nice and snug to the tubing inside there. And when you do this, uh, if you do it, um, don't hold that cap real hard, just to hold it softly so when it takes off on you, you don't, don't take your hand with it. Uh, do it nice and slow, don't gun that, uh, gun that drill up. Now once you got your two holes, um, just get the tubing and uh, shove it in there and uh, make sure it's nice and snug and you saw the diagram I drew uh, so you know the first uh, tube goes in just a little bit into the bottle and the next tube goes all the way to the bottom and then you just alternate one tube has both both going to the bottom next tube has uh, both sides going to the top of the uh, bottle
And I had a whole bunch of rolls of tape, so I used them to study the uh, apparatus out. I put all the tubes in, as you can see, to the left would be the apparatus. Comes out the tube, goes in the first uh, bottle, then the next, the next, the next, all the way down to the, um, the funnel. Now that funnel, when you're uh, ready to actually use this apparatus, you can put a stick or a scissors or something across that cup there, right? Tape it to the cup so it don't move. And then when you stick the funnel, I mean, put some water in there, you want to put the funnel right below the surface of the water. And then you can tape it to that pair of scissors or uh, a stick or whatever and uh, have it nice and level and in the water and uh, it won't move that way. Another way you can do that is you can build something like a, a, a test tube stand. If you're familiar with that, you know it's got a top and bottom, they got holes in it. Find the hole that's right for your bottle. You don't want it too snug where you can't get the bottle in and out. But you don't want it too big where it's going to be falling all over the place. Um, so you cut your holes, how many holes you got, depends on how many bottles you got in your bubbler. Uh, if you got two, you make two holes. Um, make a roof, a ceiling, and then go get some wood make some walls for that, just like a test tube holder. Uh, that way you got, when you put your tubes in, the bottles are sitting there and nothing's moving around. And uh, if you don't have that, you can even use a cardboard box. Just get a knife or whatever, as long as it's a little bit shorter than the bottle. Uh, you can cut some holes in them and uh, put, them, put the bottle in the hole so that it helps uh, sturdy it out. So once it's all sturdy, uh, I got a heat, I mean a uh, glue gun and some hot glue and I just put some on there real good and then when it dried, I did it again. I put some more on each one of those caps. I tried to do the inside of the caps but I couldn't. Uh, my caps weren't that big and if I did that I wouldn't be able to screw the cap on. But uh, if I had to do it again I'd get bigger caps so I could put glue on the inside and the outside of, of the cap around the uh, tubing. Uh, just a couple more things. I want you to look at that top picture again, that top top diagram like I showed you before. I want you to remember the apparatus is coming in right here on the left, right to the first canister. That canister is the suck back trap. That's in case that it gets sucked back, this water has somewhere to go besides the apparatus. All right. Now the second one with the water in it, that's the actual scrubber. It's going to scrub whatever gas is going through there because it has to go through that water first. And this is a scrubber too. It doesn't need a back uh, suck back trap. Having just a funnel, you know, just having the apparatus come to this funnel with the water or whatever you have in there, uh, that's a great idea if you have a, uh, you know, a fume hood or a, uh, you know, you're not really working with that bad of a gas or whatever. If you're working with chlorine or something like that or hydrogen chloride or something nasty, um, just having this isn't the greatest idea. If you have a fume hood, yeah, it's great. Uh, because what happens is is the water gets sucked up into the funnel and it let, lets air come in, but it also lets the uh, gas come out during that time. So... You know what I mean? This is, if you don't have a fume wood and you have nothing, you know, this is great. Uh, another thing is, is uh, always keep in mind that the, the, the suck back trap is empty and the scrubber is filled. Um, and also, you can put different liquids in here. I don't know if I brought that up. It doesn't have to be water. Uh, like I said, if it's chlorine, I'd use sodium hydroxide. It reacts a lot faster. And, uh, then maybe have water in the last one there. Um, but it depends on what you're scrubbing. You know what I mean? You want the liquid that scrubs it to react or absorb the gas. That's the most important thing. Okay, and that, I hope this, even though it sounds chinchy and little, I mean, for a free scrubber, hey, you can't beat it. I mean, uh, you know, get some tubing and some uh, hot glue and, uh, what is this, like five bucks for a scrubber? And uh, always remember, science is great.